In this video, I'm going to talk about the layering system if you're going to go do the Arctic Circle Trail in Greenland in September, and potentially October. What do you need to bring with you literally to the Arctic in Greenland for your upper body layers? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. This question was submitted from a viewer in a comment on my video, and the question was by Rory Shields, what would be a good example of an appropriate puffy mid-layer in the Arctic Circle Trail or for the Arctic Circle Trail in September. Rory, thank you very much for submitting the question. And I'm going to tell you, the viewer, and Rory as well, exactly what I brought to Greenland and how it worked. The first thing that I started off with was a synthetic base layer. Exactly this type of shirt here. Uh, it's been a while since I've been there, but I mean, my shirt got destroyed. But this style shirt works super well. It is a synthetic base layer. Virtually anything will work. That being said, I would go with a wool base layer now, a 150, maybe a 200 weight shirt, simply because after six days of wearing a synthetic, <laughs> exactly, just disgusting. By the end of that trail, by the end of the 100 plus mile, 160 kilometer trail, as I was walking, every time my jacket moved, I got this puff of like a hot garbage dump in the middle of August in the Northern Hemisphere. It was horrible. So that was one mistake I made is I definitely should have gone with wool and synthetic. Wool is not as durable as synthetic, but believe me, the smell, you will deal with it big time. The next layer that I had in my system was a simple fleece jacket. The fleece jacket that I have, and like this guy right here, it will totally work for you because one of the challenges is that the temperature, depending on if you're in the beginning of September or the end of September through October like I was, the temperatures can go from 40 degrees Fahrenheit or about 5 degrees Celsius down to negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit or about negative 30 degrees Celsius. The huge variation is the big challenge that you're going to experience. So I used a fleece jacket and it works super great. I also bought a second or brought a second fleece jacket just because I could build up the layers knowing that if it got really, really bad, I can put that second layer on while it was raining and not have to worry about my puffy coat getting soaked and then more importantly frozen. So a great fleece jacket totally works. And then as far as the puffy coat, the next thing that I would wear is a down light style like this puffy coat from, uh, where is it? Eddie Bauer totally works. You do not need to spend mega bucks, whether it's Arcteryx or Patagonia or North Face or whatever. Holy schmoly. Now, some people will argue differently, but you know, each person has their opinion. By the way, if you want to learn about what the entire story of the Greenland Trail was like, or at least part of it, in my book, Antarctic Tears, in the chapter called, <laughs> it is called How to Camp in the Snow, that chapter here, How to Camp in the Snow, that will give you a good idea of what being in Greenland in the late September, early October time frame is. And by the way, my book, Adventure Expedition 1, tells you all of these details and more. So definitely check that out. So this basic puffy coat with the hood, this is what I brought to Greenland. The hood is integral because that adds a huge amount of warmth to your body. It is a major factor. By the way, at the end of the video, I'm gonna share a couple important points about the Arctic Circle Trail, so stay tuned here. But this weight down jacket that will work with a fleece jacket totally worked for me. The problem is that this one fits pretty well and I can have a sweater, but if I put my fleece coat in there, it starts to compress the down and it doesn't work as well. I still debate that. Early September, you're probably going to, you're probably going to get rain so that is a big consideration as well. So how are you going to manage your puffy coat from being soaked and then turning into an ice cube? That is a big factor. Usually when I'm out on the trail and there's any type of weather, I'll start with my fleece and then convert to my puffy coat. 
The puffy coat is the hardest call. You don't need a expedition weight puffy coat. I mean, now granted it is Greenland, it is the Arctic and you will be above the Arctic circle. So uh, no guarantees, weather is different from year to year. I didn't bring snowshoes, I didn't bring anything to cross the snow with. I didn't have skis, I didn't have crampons, I didn't have micro spikes. I was taking a huge risk. Stay tuned for the end so for the major factor. And then the final layer that I was using and wearing was dun, 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 <laughs> my event jacket. I've gone through a couple of different event jackets. This one is from uh, REI. Oh, it's starting to tear apart. I love the event jacket versus a Gore-Tex jacket simply because the event will allow you to evaporate more sweat. So when you're sweating and getting steamed up, uh, I think it's Lake Tasserac. When you're coming out of Lake Tasserac, and I'm sure I'm mangling the pronunciation, is or Tasselac, maybe it's Tasselac, is you're going up a very steep hill hauling a heavy pack and you're going to be going up and it's probably going to be lightly drizzling and you're going to have a shell jacket on. You're going to want to take it off or take your inner layers off. Tough call, but I love Event because it breathes better. Some people argue that it does not work as well against the wind compared to Gore-Tex, but for me, the Event breathability is more important than that absolute shell layer. And I'd rather actually be slightly cool traveling in conditions like that. Now, here's what you actually came for that you didn't realize. If you're going to go do the Arctic Circle Trail in September, couple of factors. Insects are still going to be around. Are you prepared to bring sunscreen and sun protection? Even though the sun is starting to get lower, the sun is up so long you will get incinerated. So that's the biggest thing people fail to bring with them is some sort of sun protection, sunscreen, spray, stick, uh, visor, hat, whatever. Make sure you bring something to protect you from the sun. Make sure also when you show up to the police station at Kangaroo Le Chois, that you or Sandre Stromford for the uh, Dan uh, Danish, yeah, yeah, Danish, make sure that you have evacuation insurance because if you get there late, mid-September, they'll say, ah, oh, you're here really late. We're not comfortable with this. And they'll ask you, do you have your evacuation insurance? And you can say, yes, here. And then do you have communication devices and all that? Have that as well. That will make a big difference because they can deny you the right or the rights. You don't have rights there. You have the permission to go hiking on their trail. So that is a huge, huge consideration. And that is my layer system for the Arctic Circle Trail in Greenland for early September through late September and into October. Be aware, it can get really crazy cold there and have a 60 degree variance in Fahrenheit and a 40 degree variance in Celsius. My name's Aaron Lindstow, I'm a polar explorer. Please check out, and what I'm also my professional adventure, whatever. Uh, please check out links in the description to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost in Windy Corner, Adventure Expedition One, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as check out my show, Antarctic Tears and World Beyond. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more information like this.